Dow Inc., meantime, posting an earnings beat for its second quarter. The chemicals company pointed to an increased demand and tight supply across its segments, but signaled a brighter outlook as the global economic recovery broadens. Joining us now first on CNBC, Jim Fitterling. He is the Dow chairman and CEO. Sir, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm looking at a couple of analyst reports, significant beat. One says healthy earnings beat, says another. Yet I look at your stock this morning, and it's down by more than 2%. Why do you think that is? Well, as you know, sometimes uh, real results in the market don't line up. Uh, but our second quarter was the strongest quarter in the company's history, pre or post spin. And our third quarter order book is very, very strong. So I think our outlook is that we're going to see a third quarter very much uh, like the second quarter. And that's across many of our segments uh, and driven, obviously, by demand and backlogs at our customers. Many of our customers now with 45 to 60 day backlogs on their order books. You know, I'm looking at at least, I, I suppose you could call it criticism, that this is a story about higher prices for you and that it's unsustainable in the chemicals market. Certainly, that's the narrative put forth by Bank of America last week, where they downgraded your stock to an underperform, where they say the top is near. Are they telling a different story than one that you see? I think it's been a difficult market for people to understand, and I think a lot of it has been based on what they saw with oil price and, and when oil prices went down. Uh, we have to remember that supply coming on in oil is in advance of demand that's coming. We're, we're within four to five million barrels a day of pre-COVID oil demand numbers, and I think that's the same thing that we see in our downstream markets. We're still not back to volume numbers like we had pre-pandemic. So we've had record earnings, and we're still not back to pre-pandemic volumes. In the second quarter, we had pretty much a month of impact from winter storm Uri, and we were able to deliver great volumes, up 9 percent, and great pricing. And in the third quarter, we're running hard going into July with an order book that's stronger than we had in the second quarter. And it looks like we're going to be running hard now through the end of the year, and probably not a chance at that point to build inventories. Well, I think, Jim, something is Jim Kramer. Uh, one of the things that I think confound people is they look at the cue of the stock market and they think, oh, well, there it is. That's what's wrong. And then they try to build a thesis backward. I don't want to play that game, but I do know that you were on record suggesting that Dow's peak EBITDA, earnings for interest tax appreciation and amortization, was about $12 billion. And it, after this print, you are at that run rate. So perhaps people are saying that's as good as it can get. He's told you what to, what to shoot for. They got there. Well, what we said to them today, Jim, was it isn't as good as it can get. Uh, we're at that run rate, but we've also got $1.6 billion of higher earnings coming, a billion from incremental capacity expansions, which are underway right now, and $600 million from a combination of digital investments and productivity growth. So you've got $1.6 billion of additional earnings on top of that, and that's conservative in the near term. It will take me a little while to ramp CapEx up to depreciation. We're spending $1.6 billion in CapEx this year. I want to get it up to $2.2 billion. And then we're going to look at obviously going beyond that as the economy continues to strengthen. Right now, GDP projections are greater than 6 percent on the back of the United States, China, and a little bit of Western Europe. The rest of Europe India, Brazil, and other economies in Southeast Asia are going to come out of this pandemic and add to that demand strength. And I think that's where the issue is. I think people are being too conservative about the forward look for 2022. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.